pediatric pharmacology. In pediatric pharmacology, we're dealing with kids, obviously. Um, it's a different population uh, than with grown-ups. It's not just that we're making the dose smaller. There are different um, rates of absorption. There are different um, rates of metabolism in kids. Um, a lot of times we need to be real careful with pediatrics. Um, and in fact, every time we have a pediatric patient, we are real careful. But um, the parental consent is necessary, and we're very limited without it. Um, pediatric pharmacokinetics, um, an influencing factor to absorption, the child's age, health status, underlying disease, hydration, um, root of administration, those types of things. Um, and the gastric acidity and root of administration is really important. Emptying motility, the surface area, the enzyme levels, the intestinal flora, everything is important when it comes to that. Um, GI absorption is less developed in neonates and progressively gets better with development. There, again, may be difficulty with absorption during adolescence. Uh, gastric pH is quite alkaline when the child is one to three years of age. Then um, it has matured to a proper pH after that. It is not until more acidic pH um, that most drugs absorb properly. Delaying emptying in neonates and infants decrease most of medication absorption. Immaturity of the GI tract and diarrhea decreases the absorption time available for medications. Lower lipase levels and decreased absorption of lipid-soluble drugs also affects children. So influencing factors, neonates and infants are 70% water. Um, they're definitely more dilute. Um, body tissue composition in neonates and infants have less body fat. Um, and the body fat that they do have is often that good brown fat. So um, protein binding capabilities, neonates and infants have less albumin and fewer protein receptor sites. So if it's a highly protein bound med and it's relying on that for transport around the body, um, there's going to be an issue with that. Um, if it's not a highly protein bound med, and it's going to float around just fine with perfusion. It's going to be less, less affected by that. Um, so when we talk about um, pediatric pharmacodynamics, we do talk about onset peak and duration. Half-life may be different, um, and it all depends on the med, whether it's longer or shorter. Um, the things that might make pharmacodynamics different are organ function, the development of the child, and the routes of administration that we must use. Um, some kids don't like shots. Um, we you often use um, IVs a little bit less in kids coming into the ER than grown-ups. Um, and maybe um, shots and oral meds a little bit more. Nursing implications. Double, triple, quadruple, check those calculations with another nurse um, and assess the therapeutics and be watching that ever so carefully. Each kid is different. Administration, identify, um, identification can be an issue with pediatrics. We need two patient identifiers and oftentimes we can't just ask the patient um, at this point, especially if they're five years old or if they're two years old, um, we have to rely on parents at some point. Uh, developmental age consideration, safety, restraint, and atraumatic care are very important. Um, obviously, we want to be able to balance these, um, which is not a perfect um, art. <laughs> we look at family-centered care involving the whole family in the decision. Um, that doesn't mean that, you know, their two-year-old brother is making decisions for the three-year-old. That means that um, we're involving everybody in, and uh, teaching parents how to use um, insulin that might be needed for the three-year-old or um, teaching brother and sister when to go get mommy or daddy when they know that it's an emergency or when, you know, a 12-year-old 
when to call 911. Um, so um, that is uh, kind of the crux of family-centered care. Emla, let, and distraction are used quite a bit. Um, and let is something that is... Um, so that is something that's used to numb an area that we're going to be um, cleaning and then suturing. And emla numbs an area um, of which we're going to be placing an IV. So in kids, um, infants, um, it's that vastus lateralis that's used. And the ventral gluteal then in older children can be used. Um, so um, children may prefer sub-Q injections in the leg or upper arm rather than in the abdomen. Um, they're still, many of them are still in that developmental stage where they think their body is going to bleed out um, if they have a little tiny bit of blood. So sometimes the less they can see, the better. Um, adolescent considerations, though, individualized care to very specific to the developmental age, the physiological changes, the cognitive levels and abilities um, can vary quite a bit within the adolescent um, continuum. Emotional factors um, and um, the emotional factor of rebellion <laughs> in adolescence is a real tough thing to um, work with in and uh, developing that trust between you and that adolescent in order to create better adherence. Um, and then an impact of, of chronic illness on that person and how it affects an adolescent. <clears throat> For some reason, we bounce back to geriatric pharmacology, and it looks like these are all a um, repeat of what has been in um, other portions of this PowerPoint. So um, as we go through this, yay! You're done with this part of the lecture.